In this video, guys, we're going to look at what is relative strength. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm well, welcome to you. Okay, so what is relative strength? The official definition is when you take one stock, and let's say it's XYZ stock, and you divide it by ABC stock value, and you get a ratio. And you can say, well, actually, this stock is twice as strong as this stock. And that's the, kind of the official definition. And I'm, you know, I, I kind of get that makes sense and someone has to quantify it somehow. But what use is that to us in the real world? Let's look at some actual real world useful examples of what relative strength is. Um, it's like, kind of like when you draw it on TradingView, yeah, or you've got it on a charting platform and you have your uh, standard chart there and then you put the, another chart in to compare. Sometimes it says add chart to compare or whatever it is and the other chart comes in normally different color and it does this and you go, oh, whoop, you know, look at that. It's, over that period, it's, it's twice as strong and it's gone up, you know, more than this one has percentage wise. And NASDAQ's outperformed S&P, whatever you're looking at. The problem is when you move this anchor point, i.e. the zero point, the game changes. So, you know, if you had a dip here, for example, and this carried on kind of pushing here. Yes, over that period of time, it's still stronger. But if you kind of started the chart there and you dragged it back here, all of a sudden, this thing, this one would be way more, uh, would be way stronger than this because these two are then anchored in here and it would go on this way. You get the point. You've probably played around with this before yourself. So how can we use this in our own trading? If you've kind of got these numbers that are reasonably arbitrary, depending on where you're anchoring them from, uh, what value is it? So to me, this is where the value comes in, guys. If you've got a chart like this, right? And let's say, let's use an example of the stock market. The stock market, and then with the stock market, we've got uh, a specific stock. And we want to see if that stock is relatively strong compared to the market. So we might have uh, the market is doing this. So let's say the market is rallied up and then it's pushed down like that. So that's the overall market and we can call that the market. Whether that is the FTSE, whether that's the DAX, whether it's the S&P, whatever it may B. So what I'll do now is we'll draw the stock on. Let's get rid of this thing here. Let's draw the stock on here and we'll compare the two. So we've got the market there and we've got the stock who's kind of looking similar, whatever stock this may be. Yeah, you know, it's gone up with the market. And let's say it's kind of done this instead, right? So the market's gone lower We're at the same time scale here. And I'm not quite done it to scale, but we've got the same kind of time frame here time across the bottom, whatever that is, a couple of weeks or whatever. Um, now, the market has gone up and now it's come down. As we can see, this kind of excellent drawing that I've done. Uh, the stock, however, has come up with the market, the same kind of order of magnitude. And I've simplified this a little bit. But in other words, as the stock, has, as the market's rallied, the stock has rallied. And these two correlated instruments anyway, obviously the market is correlated to individual stocks. Generally speaking, this could be anything, but this is a great example. Now the market has come down and we can see here we've retraced whatever that is, two thirds of that rally. However, the stock has sat and it's sitting near highs. So it hasn't come down with the market. Now this to me is useful information. This is relative strength that's actually useful because what does this mean? This is basically saying to us, okay, with all this pressure from the market, sellers have not decided to hit this stock too aggressively. Buyers have not come out of their long position, shorts have not come out of the woodwork. In actual fact, it's stagnated and done nothing. So the expectation could be that if now this market were to pick up and push higher, then this stock may well break out because it's got relative strength. If the market were to push lower still, then the stock could just sit there and do nothing if it's going to repeat what it's done before. Of course, that's not always the case. The stock could tank through the floor uh, and the market rip to highs. But what you're saying is you're saying, okay, over this period, the market's chugged up and it's done very nicely. So is the stock, but it's now relatively strong because when the market's pulled back, the stock hasn't. So if you're thinking, well, I want to buy the strongest stocks, what would you go to? You would go to this one as opposed to a stock that's, you know, if the market's doing this, the stock had kind of done this. You probably wouldn't want to buy that. You want to buy a stock that had the best chance of kind of seeing what's under the hood, if you like, under the bonnet, 
and saying, well, actually, even when the market had a lot of pressure on it, this thing stayed relatively firm. If we get a bounce, then this is probably going to be one of the first stocks that catches a bid. Will that happen? You don't know. But all you're doing is picking out something that's relatively strong. And it's the same with relative weakness. You know, we could mess up this kind of picture even more, but you get the point. Relative weakness would be, you know, the market's gone up, but this thing has gone down and just stayed weak, even though the market's been strong. That would be relative weakness. To me, that's far more effective and far more useful from a trading perspective than kind of an arbitrary ratio, which you get. And again, it's in a table format that might be handy as a filter, perhaps to kind of dig further into a trade. But ultimately, you know, how the market's performed over the time frame that you want to trade, whether that's a swing train, whether that's a swing time frame, whether it's a day trading perspective, whatever it may be, and saying, okay, well, actually, you know, let's say intraday it was a great example. Uh, you know, the market's kind of doing this intraday, and you think, well, actually, the market could well bounce off this. Perhaps there's a VWAP uh, coming up to it. There'd be more trade here if it was a VWAP, but you get the point, or a moving average, you think it's going to bounce off and finish at highs. What would be a great stock to head to? Probably this one, because it's actually relatively strong. And actually, if the market catches a bid, this may well catch an even bigger bid. And if the market doesn't catch a bid, it might well just sit there and do nothing. So that's relative strength from a kind of useful perspective, as opposed to a, not a numerical perspective, which I think, you know, sometimes you can't really get much edge from. This, however, trading it, especially when you've got a good feel for the underlying, whether that's a, you know, get currency pair it or commodity or whatever it may be, you've got a good feel for some of these relative uh, relationships and you see that relative strength or relative weakness, it's a tradable opportunity. All right, guys, take care. Thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. Much appreciated. Bye-bye.